Hello, my name is Thomas. I'm from Audi Physique, and I introduce to you today our new Medeos. Medeos is the exception. Why? First of all, the demand was to build a speaker that is higher than I am. No, just joking. <laughs> uh, and even Manfred, the designer, the um, engineer who built that, is not as tall as the speaker. We found out. Um, however, the Medeos is um, the biggest speaker, the largest speaker, probably as well the most heaviest speaker and the most expensive speaker we did ever build. Yeah. Um, it retails at 160,000 euros or from 160,000 euros onwards. And, uh, but it features some technology that the Hyper world hasn't seen before. Oh, yeah. I start with something else and then I explain the special technology. We have a five-way system. We have eight base drive units on the left, or four on the left and four on the right hand side. And Parsons signed this one, so he's mentioned this is the right speaker, as you can see, Alan Parsons. So we know this is the right speaker. So eight base drive units. We have four base mid range drive units, two in the bottom end and two in the upper end. And then we have, and that's the speciality, we have a new mid range drive unit. Uh, mid-range tweeter and a tweeter. We know that some customers like to drive speakers quite loud, so in order to de-stress the tweeter a bit, we have the mid-range tweeter. Um, the speciality is the mid-range drive unit. Um, it's pat it's uh, patent pending, so you have to look to, to you. It's patent pending, and if you come closer, um, you will see there's a very thin foil that is controlled by a frame. Um, Claudia, um, one of our owners, um, she's there in the background and she will bring me the foil and later the frame, hopefully. Thank you very much, Claudia. As you can see, this is the foil. This is basically the membrane of the speaker. And it's very thin. And of course, if you think about um, design of a drive unit, what you would like to achieve is less weight. Yeah? As lighter it is, as fast it can be. And this thing, this weights probably 0 0.1 gram. What kind of material is it? It's foil. Just foil. Just foil. Special, special foil. foil, special foil of course. Yeah. And uh, I won't tell you exactly which special foil it is, mm -hmm. but it's special foil. And you can touch it if you like. It looks like stuff they, they put in front of Light. Yeah, something like that probably very much in that in that yeah. Can you see the 3D? And then this is the what we call the frame, and basically, as you can imagine, this is basically the drive unit. Then. You have the Schwingspule, I have just what yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the, the voice, voice coil, coil, the voice coil. You have the yeah. voice coil um, behind and then the magnet. Yeah. And it's a very flat drive unit because the magnet sits inside. Typically you have the magnet sitting outside the basket. Mm -hmm. um, so the magnet can sit inside. And that is technology we learned from our spiderless um, drive unit that we used first in the Cadeas. And um, then we built the Spark monitor speaker and we have it in codex and medix as well um, so this is how the drive unit looks in total okay you twist it yeah. yes of course i know you're curious yeah. so you see it's normally a dynamic speaker at the end and we combine it with a foil so that's the trick yeah. and what you can see there as well it's uh, we always use double um, double basket constructions. So we have an outer um, aluminium um, basket and then we have a, um, a plastic inside basket and all the light things like the, like the foil and the, um, and the frame are connected um, to the inside basket and that decouples um, um, or that is connected to the um, aluminium basket and like that we reduce the vibrations and any kind of distortions um, that go back into the system. Yeah. By the way, every drive unit, I said I used the word spiderless, and real spiderless mean there is no spider, you know? 
Um, the spider is the part of a drive unit that really slows it down because it consumes a lot of energy. Yeah, because the, the function of the spider is to keep the drive unit working inside out and not left, right, yeah. up, down. Yeah. Um, we achieve that by using a surround that fixes the foil in a way that it can't move. You know, together with the frame, it's just moving inside out, nothing else. And it's really fast. And this technology, which is typically used, or which is already used in uh, tweeters, because tweeters have just a small um, surface, yeah? but in larger surfaces, it's really difficult. But we can use that for all our drive units. So these mid-base drive units, for example, they use a double surround. You know, there's no spider. Still no yeah, spider. Sp still no spider. Wow. You know? And that's something that makes the system um, very fast, very precise, very yeah. dynamic. Yeah. And that's a huge advantage, we believe. And you can hear it. But you said it's a five-way yes. loudspeaker, so the, the crossover must be extremely complex. Well, yes and no. So the good thing is, of course, we develop all our drive units ourselves. Yeah. So we know exactly what they have to do. And that means um, the components used for the crossover um, can be reduced. Mm -hmm. you know? So we are really using little components yeah. for a 5-way system. But of course, on a 5-way passive system, you need some resistors and some other yeah. stuff. You know? And uh, the crossovers for the base is inside yeah. the base. And uh, for the three mid-range or tweeter, um, it's in that chamber. It's one, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah. All yeah. right. So one, yeah. two, three, four, and then five. Yeah. The eight bases is five. And um, how, uh, d does the, the mid range and Twitter have an own cabinet completely? Yes. Yeah. Separated from yes. the mid As you know, if you go to our other room, you can see a, a part model of uh, the Medex, and you can see that Twitter and mid range have their own chamber. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we use a lot of ceramic foam. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have heard about that. A little bit. A little bit, probably for your audience. Yeah. Ceramic foam is a material that is used for steel production to divide the liquid steel from dirt. And uh, this stuff is like a filter and it contains out of 85% air. But it's really rigid. It's almost rigid, not, not really like, but almost rigid like diamond. Um, so it means, first of all, it contains a lot of, or it, it doesn't take that much space, and it's very rigid. That means if we use that for building the the um, um, the uh, cabinet, mm -hmm. yeah, it provides a lot of rigidity in the cabinet, and as well, a lot of dis distortion already is taken away. Yeah. Of, yeah. You know, when they move back, you know, it's it's like a diffused, um, it's like a diffuser. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You That's also cool. use a lot of glass on your speakers. Yes, yeah. A lot of people ask, how can you build speakers made of glass? I mean, how is that possible? Glass is the worst material that can be used in yeah. hi-fi. But it's not a glass speaker. When I joined Audio Physic, I always said, yeah, our speakers are made of glass. And my dear friend Wolfgang told me, Thomas, that's completely wrong. <laughs> you know, it's a wooden cabinet, yeah. and then we use glass on the side. And the combination of that kind of sandwich the wooden glass combination, the wood glass combination sandwich is perfect. It's almost acoustically dead. Mm -hmm. yeah? And it gives a lot of weight as well, so it works perfectly. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, so and some sorry. So sorry to interrupt. No. And one, one advantage if you think about a high gloss black lacquered speaker. You know, like really best finish from any kind of Italian piano manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you clean it, mm -hmm. you know what happens. Mm -hmm. It will be scratched immediately. Yeah. With our speakers, you just use a bit of glass clean, <laughs> and they, after 20 years, they look like they are brand new. You know, a big advantage. And if something breaks, you can repair it easily because you can exchange oh, you can it. Just ex oh, that's yeah? pretty cool. Try to try yeah. to do that with a high gloss. Nope. Black or high gloss white or high gloss anything. Absolutely speaker. You can't. impossible. Impossible. Yeah. Uh, some practical yeah. stuff. Uh, so 160,000 
a correct? Pair, a pair. A pair, okay. Yeah, That's so important because some people yeah. uh, of course. definitely ask is yeah. it each or a pair. I know that if you hear them, you will say it's a 200,000 per piece, but. <laughs> <laughs> they did sound pretty yeah. good. Uh, I was yeah, up in the corner, so it was yeah. a little bit bass heavy, but yeah. that's the room. Um, when will it be available? Is it it's available, it can be ordered from now, but it is limited to 10 pairs. 10 worldwide. pairs? 10 pairs worldwide. And one will be given away? No, this is our demo pair, yeah. you know, and that will go to charity. Yeah. Um, Alan Parsons was so kind, uh, he has a friend who has an NGO, yeah. and um, we will put that into that. Uh, okay. Why do you only manufacture 10 pairs? Because we think that it is the right number and uh, that's already a lot of work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and honestly, I mean a limited pair, that's what it is. Yeah. If you yeah. want it, you have to buy it now. Okay. Yeah. How, how, how long does it take to build one pair? Quite long. Yeah. yeah I, I, can't, can I, can't, I can't determine exactly how long, but... Um, estimation? Um, estimation a few days, a week. Yeah. At least, yeah, full time. Yeah, full, yeah. yeah. Well, it's you know some of the things um, um, you know you need to work on it, and then you have to leave it alone, you know. But it's it's a, it's let's say it's a week. Okay. Well, this means it's also like a technology demo for you, so your new technology will trickle down Up. in the future. Well, that's that's, that's of course the idea. Yeah. If that happens, no one knows because all of these drive units are still made by hand mm -hmm. Hmm. by Manfred, and it takes them quite long to, wow. to make one. Yeah. Okay. Um, of course, we are thinking about um, to create an industrial process of making them, but we'll probably talk about two, three years. Yeah. Who knows, you know? Um, what I would like to add to the cabinet, um, um, it's, it's coming in three pieces. So it's not just one, and you need a crane to put it into the room, or probably take the <laughs> roof off and then put it in, you know? Um, um, it comes in three pieces. One piece is the two base, and the um, bottom plate, then the upper base, and then everything you see on the front, there's a, another case like that, oh, yeah. and then it will be connected, and it can be done by two people. Yeah. Uh, within